Welcome to the Screaming Room. If you tuned into our channel last year, you probably remember that every day in October we released a podcast talking about one of the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror Halloween specials. It was not easy, but we did it. <laughs> it was long. I'm glad that we did it, but I never want to do anything like that it ever again. It was a nightmare. But yes, we did a podcast for every Treehouse of Horror episode, and this year we thought we would mix it up a bit, and instead of a podcast, we are giving you a screaming room. Really? That is the most random use of trap kick I've ever heard in my life. They certainly Disney-fied this. Like, you can see it. You can see that Disney now has their fingerprints in this one. Um, even just from the opening, like, you know right away. Okay, okay. We're already off to some hell of a start now. <laughs> well, they also had kind of that last year, too. Really? But unlike last year, I thought this year was actually funny. Yeah, there were actually funny moments. Um, I don't remember shit from last year. And, and the things I do, I remember being bad. I'm good. Well, I'm going to agree with you to a degree. I just don't remember a damn thing from last year. And I'm not going to be 100% sure I'll remember anything from this year either. I just know that as of right now, I remember nothing, not a damn thing about last year's episode. Like, it's just poof. I hated last year's. That's probably what, well, part of the reason. The, uh, yeah, Brandon doesn't like it, then, yeah, considering if you're a newer viewer, that um, I'm very indifferent about The Simpsons. Zach despises them. Uh, David used to love them, but now he's on that luke yeah. lukewarm area, and Brandon absolutely loves The Simpsons. Uh, I actually thought this year was actually very enjoyable. Not a great year by any means, but I think every segment at least got a laugh from me which is a huge step up from last year where I just couldn't wait for it to end. I, I enjoyed this year overall. I can't say I hated it because I laughed at portions of it. But that being said, I think I rolled my eyes and, and kind of made, you know, little remarks here and there more than I laughed. I would say the biggest problem with this one is it felt like we're just going to be random and we're just, we're going to throw shit at the wall and see the stickiest thing that we can find and just go with that. But at least some stuff did stick this year. That I, is not always the case. No, 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 that's no not always it the is case. not. So we do begin with a very disney animation, but even though The Simpsons are, of course, owned by Disney now, that's not really a shock to me because early Simpsons would make fun of Disney stuff all the time. In fact, in some of the commentaries, they even talked about how if they told their animators, yeah, we're spoofing Disney, the animators would actually work overtime gladly to make fun of Disney. <laughs> the thing is, though, this didn't feel like it was making fun of Disney. It felt like it was trying to be like, let's make Disney happy. I'm not going to disagree with that, but I'm but what I'm saying is seeing Disney-fied animation in The Simpsons isn't unheard of. Fair enough. And for the most part, I did enjoy this intro. It's, of course, a little random at a certain point, as we'll get to. But essentially, this is a spoof of Bambi, with Bart as Bambi. But we begin with, you know, a kind of Disney esque song with like some dark lyrics which i don't remember the lyrics at all i honestly didn't really care for the song itself but we do get a lot of imagery of cute woodland critters basically murdering each other um we got a bee that gets eaten by a toad and it stings the toad from inside its eye so there's a lot of nature being not very nice to each other life will be full of pain I think that the randomness would have been would have been better had it been bloodier and more violent. I think that would have been added a little bit more fun to it. I think I think if it had been like just 
over the top violent because it's Bambi, which is like very sweet and innocent. And if you had like overly violent, as much as they could push it, like overly violent, like the randomness of it would, would actually be very, very funny and very creative. And I would have been like, oh shit, this is really, really fun because it's the exact opposite of what Bambi represents. That really was the only thing I thought this intro was missing was just some blood. Mm -hmm. Um, I liked yeah. the concept. I liked the idea of how they opened it. It was just missing the blood was all. But anyway, to get into it, so Bart is Bambi, Marge is his mother, and Marge is warning Bart that a hunter has entered the woods, and Bart's millhouse friend as a rabbit was very excited and asked what a hunter was, right before his head gets blown off with a shotgun. Marty, wait for me! Shh, stop all that noise! A hunter has entered the forest! Cool. What's a hunter? No blood, by the way. And again, this would have been a lot fucking funnier if it was if it was more gratuitous. I agree. I thought yeah. it was funny because he also shot his leg off. Yeah. That yeah. Was fucking... The, uh... It was still funny nonetheless because you do get that Millhouse personality. Yeah. He was very excited and then he dies. There's no happy ending there and we know it. Marge tells Bambi Bart to run and Bart is hesitant at first, but then both he and his mother start running. They find a cave. Bart goes into the cave, but his mother didn't make it. He goes looking for her. But luckily, unlike the original movie, she survives. Well, that she sees it quickly. <laughs> Where, where's my mama? I'm fine, sweetheart. I'm fine. And it turns out that Bart's father, which is a deer in the form of like Homer, kind of, uh, killed the Mr. Burns hunter and starts basically throwing him back and forth with a Lenny deer. And Mr. Burns is happy that they're herbivores, but today his name is Herb. Your father took care of the bad man. Time for a little dad party. <laughs> Thank God you're herbivores. That's right. And today your name is Herb. <laughs> Cue the dropkick Murphys for some reason. Uh, I, Why? I, I, I like it. like we had like three just random like just shit in a row. Like literally, it's like Herb and then like Welcome to the Stag Party. Random, it's just, just random, like shit. random. It just like it's just where I it's just and then, and, then, and then Dropkick shows up out of nowhere and then that's like my and I'm a massive Dropkick Murphy fan. I've seen them four times live and i love this song it's it's a fantastic song but i i don't i don't even have the slightest clue it's what would warrant them to use this song i, I don't know why this bothers me so much i guess if i wasn't such a big fan of dropkick i i wouldn't care as much but it's it's a super fucking random i just want to know why if somebody knows like some hidden meaning of that song that we're not aware of that could explain this Please let us know in the comments. Yeah. Because I would like to know. I liked the intro. It, it ended on a random note with the song. But other than that and the lack of blood, I really liked the intro. It was fun. It was... I liked it. I I, I just... I'm very... I was very indifferent about it. I think I think it was a missed opportunity on a couple different levels. I think I think I would have... I think I would have enjoyed it if they put more emphasis on the song and they and they made the lyrics even more ridiculous. I think I think I just needed it to be more in okay. one direction. It seemed to be too level, and I, I like I needed a little bit. I needed the, the speakers were at five and needed them to go to ten, and then the random dropkick song at the end was was completely random. But besides that, whatever. I'm not a fan. I, I yeah. kind of just. In the same boat as Brandon, I, I feel like they needed a little bit more detail, like maybe a little bit of blood. It is a Halloween episode, and it's kind of like this throughout the whole episode. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we go and yeah. talk about our segments, but yeah. We've mentioned this last year, so I don't want to dwell on this point too much, but it is weird how some years get really bloody and other years don't, and there seems to be no rhyme or reason why. So our first segment is Bong Joon-ho's This Side of Parasites. No words. Yeah, I got nothing. Wait, did they say parasites? I think so. Zach, tell us about this one. 
So we start off with the Simpsons family living in a basement somewhere in some land in some somewhat modern day type place. The basement is completely flooded. Everything is floating above water. Marge and Homer are sitting on a floating couch. Lucky grip. Hey, I put a roof over your head. <laughs> You're saying under your head. Family, I have excellent news. I got a job as a tutor in a nice rich home. I remember Maggie was using a snake as a life raft, and then the snake just kind of slid it off, just letting her do her own thing. But yeah, Marge is commenting on Homer's ability to provide for the family. It's just like, you're just a very terrible provider. So it's like, well, well, shit. Uh, Bart comes in and he's like, I got a tutoring job, uh, tutoring for a rich family. Homer makes a comment about, I can't remember what exactly. How much water do they have in their living room? That's, uh, okay, that's it. How deep is the water in their living room? There's no water in their living room. <gasps> That's a thing? We kind of get a view of the town, and it's like this really nice, fancy mansion on the hill. I thought this was an Oblongs reference for a good minute, but I'm like, no, nah, there's not enough mutated families around for that to be a thing. So we continue on, and Bart is teaching uh, the daughter of the rich person or whatever how to do basic math, and the math equation is essentially, let's watch TV and not do math because math is boring. So they turn on the itchy and scratchy version of Snowpiercer. <laughs> And uh, after that, uh, the um, the rich dad, Arnold Schwarzenegger guy person, uh, decides to fire um, uh, Kirk. Uh, fires him because he smells poor. And then uh, after that, um, Bart gets his whole family hired to be like the caretakers of the house. Freaking Maggie's out back mowing the lawn, drinking whiskey and shit like that. Just just chugging along and just doing her job like, yeah, I'm the man of this house now, like, Jesus. We are beyond reproach, especially the new groundskeeper. That's not dangerous, is that whiskey? <laughs> and uh, yeah, the family leaves and they essentially become the caretakers of the house for what is essentially a week. After that, Millhouse's dad shows back up, goes to the basement, and we find out he's holding his family out there. That's right, I hid my family in this cramped, windowless basement. This is nicer than our house. See what I mean? Bad provider. And then I don't know why this made me realize it. Oh, this is a parasite, uh, parody. Everything was great until you parasites took our jobs. You're squatting in the basement and you're calling us parasites? Well, maybe the truth is the master is the parasite. Because he exploits us all. And then it turns out all the poor people, middle class people, everybody, has been living in this basement for some reason. And then a war is about to break out. Actually, no, not about to break out. It does break out. Parasites! Jeez, how many people live down here? People of all incomes. This house is an allegory. Emphasis on gore. You don't have a worthwhile bone in your body. Everybody's starting to kill each other, and then Lisa pauses everybody and just says, Wait a minute. What if we all gather together, start a community, and make life better for ourselves? And then Mo makes a comment, Isn't that socialism? Uh, kind of? And then he's just like, No, we're gonna kill her now. <laughs> that was the one point where I laughed because I thought that was kind of hilarious. Wait! If we all work together, regardless of class, we could finally change everything for the better. Wow, that sounds great! Uh, unless it's socialism. Not totally, but certain aspects are similar to so. Kill her! <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Lisa to fuck everything up. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, after a good, like, five minutes, they tear the whole house apart. For some reason, Mr. Burns and, uh, Mr. Burns' sidekick guy. Uh, yeah, that. <laughs> and are sitting at the top of the roof. I don't know how long they've been there, or, like, what their purpose is for up there, because... It's Spot. symbolism. It's a meta richness. It's a metaphor. metaphor. Either way, I don't remember this being their house, so I'm like, when the fuck did they get up there? Uh, Burns is like, they can't get up here, can they? They they can, they did, and they murdered him. There's no way they can get up here, is there? <laughs> and then we, like, go to a day later, and everyone's dead. Freaking Homer's just like, see, I can provide for the family. And then Marge makes a comment, and then Homer's just like, some people are just never happy. Well, Maggie made a little slip and slide of all the dead bodies in the house. That's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, that's the episode. 
Well, Marge, I finally got you a house with no leaks. Yeah, but it's filled with dead bodies. <laughs> Some people are never happy. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it, 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 it was okay. They, um... I think my favorite part of that segment is just Maggie's always the, like, true evilest of them all. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Like, I, I wouldn't say evilest. She's the most just like, I'm going to make this work. Whatever it is, whatever whatever situation Look, Maggie's any, in, anybody, she's work. anybody who just chugs a thing of whiskey, and yes, it is whiskey. We don't necessarily see it, but I know whiskey, and that was whiskey. Anybody who chugs a whiskey like that is just like, oh, make this shit work. Bam! Let's do this. I liked this one. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of curious since I'm the only one who's actually seen Parasite. How well you guys got it. I think, it, I mean, yeah, I got the metaphors and all that yeah. stuff. I mean, I think I probably would have enjoyed this a little bit better than um, uh, had I had seen the movie. Yeah. But um, uh, the um, I laughed at a few moments. The um, I think the um, Homer, I, I, why I snickered and kind of rolled my eyes about this was, was like Marge asked him to use a coaster um, uh, in the <laughs> fucking flooded basement. <laughs> that was, really? <laughs> Use a coaster. Really? Um, I really liked that. The, uh, I don't know why, but it's uh, one of those like little visual things that makes no sense, but it's funny to me. And here's the best part about that. Before he used the coaster, it was just floating right there, standing in one place. As soon as he puts it on the coaster, drips away. Yeah, and cartoon <laughs> logic. And then also, too, uh, Bart getting all the family a job and then, like, all pretending that they don't know each other was pretty great. They, um, uh, because that's what families do in real life. Yeah, this episode was okay. Yeah. They, um, I think I probably would have enjoyed it better, like I said, if I had Yeah, for, for the most part, this was a good spoof of Parasite. It does definitely go its own way at the end with the poor people Battle Royale. But up until then, I would say for a nearly two and a half hour movie... They actually did a pretty good job at hitting all the points of Parasite, even the metaphors behind the movie. And overall, for how little time they have for these segments, I would call this a good spoof of Parasite. One more thing I have to mention. Yes. Fucking Homer. Yes. Gets tired walking down the stairs. Go on, without me. Really, Fatso? You're that exhausted going downstairs? I was just about to say that. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I, I'm kind of in the same boat as um, Mark here, where if I'd watched the movie, I think that I would probably would have connected a little bit more with this segment. Um, but it's kind of refreshing to hear you say, since you're the only one who's watched Parasite, and say, yeah, they did a good job with the parody and a spoof, when usually it's kind of mixed. Usually, when they do this, it's either a hit or a miss. So, it's, uh, yeah. you know, when I check out the movie, I'm going to definitely check out this um, episode again and see if um, I have different feelings towards this segment. Oh, God. this go wrong. And with that, let's go to our second segment. Mark, tell us about Nightmare on Elm Tree. Um, and once again, in true Simpsons fashion, this title has nothing to fucking do with the episode. Um, uh, my... The, there were trees. I was gonna there say... Were, they, I, there I, were trees. I'm okay. gonna disagree. It does. It's just the way they designed the title. Ah, fair enough. Very misleading. So, uh, so Maggie, Lisa, Bart, and Milhouse are all up in the treehouse, uh, hanging out. Uh, Bart is telling a story, which I kind of... The one cool touch that I thought thought was interesting is how he lit his face. He lit it with a cell phone. I'm like, oh, that's actually kind of a cool update to, to everything else. And he's telling some story about, like, I don't know, bugs eating or something eating, like, the, a little girl's feet. The ghost of the murdered squirrel leaps treehouse to treehouse, biting the toes of little girls. And they all freak the fuck out, Maggie um, and Lisa. And then I think um, when they're jumping out, uh, Maggie lost her binky on the way down. And then like Bart's like, ah, they always fall for it. <laughs> Milhouse is like, yeah. <laughs> you sort of scared them. Can you get off my lap in due time? And poor Marge and Homer are just trying to have like one night. Oh, Marge, I did a chore today. Which one? Unloaded the dishwasher. Oh, the 
way. So is that there, David? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they try to, you know, uh, kind of get down, um, and uh, it doesn't work. Lisa and Maggie run into the room, and, um, and then Homer makes it worse by by saying um, it was, you know, it, telling literally another story. The one where the little girl's head is filled with potato bugs, and there's no way she can tell. But that's only partially true. Homer finally gets fed up with the trees, like dude, like that fucking tree house. I'm gonna take it down. They um every year they do three scary stories and one me uh, two great ones and one mediocre one in the middle. <laughs> I like all right. That was really funny. Um, uh, the uh, that actually might be my favorite joke of all three of these. Um, uh, it's not exactly accurate because sometimes it's the first one, sometimes it's the last one. That's bad, but sometimes, it, most of the time, they, it's all of them. They uh, shut up, Zach. Lousy treehouse. Every year, three scary stories. Two of them good, and a lame one in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's half right. Uh, that's pretty funny. Stupid hard work. I'll put an end to that. But he so he gets fed up. He fucking goes down with an axe and he starts chop, trying to chop down the tree. But it's Homer and he's fat, so he's not gonna get all the way through it. And it kind of develops a, a smile, a mouth, and then I guess Homer falls asleep, kind of, and then the tree comes to life. Um, and then um, they kind of get in a little bit of a fight, and the tree kind of you know knocks around and fucks off and runs away. Leave my trunk because you keep talking. I'm gonna chop you down before you finish that sentence. And then it ends up at a screening of Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm like, oh, they're making fun of the mentally challenged tree. This is bullshit. I am Groot. <laughs> You're real mature, laughing at a brain damaged tree. <laughs> <laughs> the and then they uh, they go down. And he starts um, uh, basically making a bunch of different trees alive. You know, there's different types of trees, and then one basketball player that says, "I've always identified as a tree." I may live in the human world, but I never forget my tree roots. And then you got the fucking plant from A Little Shop of Horrors coming around. He's like, you're, um, uh, and when he make like the one, the fun, he's a, he's a trans tree. You're not a tree, you're a plant. Yes, but I identify as a tree. I'm a trans plant. <laughs> but anyway, so they end up fucking around with the town. Um, they, I mean, they uh, kill a bunch of people. They um, get Christmas trees up. Um, Homer makes a comment about how they already have Christmas decorations up, which 100% agree with. Um, and then they get in a battle, um, a little battle royale uh, with all the townsfolk. Willie shows up with a really sweet setup, I gotta be honest. Like, two double chainsaws, and he had some knee pad chins that had a fucking um, circular saw on them. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's, pretty, that's pretty solid, man. They, um, in, until a few seconds later, and they kind of backfired on him. <laughs> Finally, I'll get my revenge for all the leaves I had to rake and all the pruning and the times the tree leaped out in front of me tractor when I was texting me friends. Da! I think Homer had a freaking yeah, he had a bat. Yeah. And then that bat that came to life. life, and then he and then literally that bat made the worst, one of the worst fucking puns that I have seen. That even I don't even think Brandon, I think Brandon blushed because it was so bad. Literally, the bat's like, I'm gonna go hit a homer. Uh, <laughs> hit me a homer. So they end up uh, fighting it, um, and they end up losing. Um, they um, The trees end up retaliating by putting in a shit ton of fucking pollen. Um, and they all start sneezing, and then Willie kind of sneezes and fucks up and chops his own arm off with the chainsaws, which is very disappointing. I always enjoy Willie, and, and it's kind of fucking... Sucks, man, when bad shit happens, though. Oh, no. Pollen! And I'm all out of antihistamine! <laughs> Ow. Really? So the trees um, end up pretty much killing everybody. 
Um, and they uh, they do bitch slap Homer um, way over there, and uh, he kind of is out of the fight. Uh, they stab a bunch of people, and once again, no blood, no, nothing like you know viscerally graphic, which is which is a missed opportunity because it would have been a lot more fun that way. And then the trees basically conquer the world. The um, and then Homer wakes up with um, a bat beating on him and knocking him out again. And then that, that was the uh, essential episode. <laughs> Halloween isn't over and they're already starting with Christmas. This episode's very similar to a previous Treehouse of Horror, which is the... Two previous, if you ask me. One, one mm -hmm. I'll mention one, you can mention the other. Um, but one of them that was my personal favorite was the Dolphin episode. It was a really enjoyable episode, and actually it was one of my favorites of all of the Treehouse of Horrors. Because in my personal opinion, it literally had everything. It had a great story, great horror, and actually great comedy. And had all that stuff mixed in, and it was just overall a really great complete story and I think this is a pale imitation. I, I don't like I said this kind of draws back to what I was saying at the beginning. I don't hate this episode because I did laugh at several different portions but I gotta be honest that I rolled my eyes and had more like audible groans than I did actual laughs. And I think I would have enjoyed this even more. I would have forgiven this a lot more if it had more gore attached to it. But it did have some funny moments. Um, I did enjoy you know I did enjoy the story um, I thought the whole, th you know, introducing the whole group thing was funny. Um, but I think that it was a missed opportunity to be more gory because I have distinct memories that the dolphin episode actually went for it. Like they yeah. actually, I mean, like I think Willie got like, like a huge hole through, yep, through the a dolphin window. dolphin impaling him through a window. Yeah, through a window. And I'm like, oh shit, that was great. This just really didn't, didn't, you know, measure up to that. But overall, it was Okay. The other one it imitated as well was the Grand Pumpkin from like season 20 because that one has a giant sentient pumpkin that goes around killing people in Springfield, much like how the killer tree in this one goes around killing people in Springfield. Yeah, and that one was actually fucking funny. So one thing I want to point out that did annoy me is when he kills comic book guy at the end, there's oh, yes. blood everywhere. Why there and not anywhere else? You will make a fine beanbag chair. That's very difficult to dispute. However, I just, oh, oh boy. Why? Because like, that blood came from off screen. And, you know, a lot of shit happens off I screen. I don't have an answer for yeah. that. Yeah. I, I wish I did. Like I've said before, it seems to be random where they choose to put blood and where they don't. For that specific instance, I'm guessing it's because comic book guy was killed off screen. But it's still weird to me how some years they'll go bloody and other years they won't. Yeah, the um, I think that, the, that there were parts of this that I enjoyed. I actually enjoyed the voice of the original tree. I thought it was, it, I thought it had a cool voice and a cool presence. But again, overall, okay, I've seen this present, this thing done better, and and both of those episodes that, that when I described the one you described are far exceedingly better. better. And actually, the funny thing is, I think that the dolphin one is a better episode. From an overall perspective, the Great Pumpkin has a much better villain. Um, uh, you know, the actual oh, Great yeah. Pumpkin is fucking hilarious. It just didn't cut up to those of previous times. And I try not to be overly nostalgic, but actually I think I can be pretty critical because I'm not as big of a fan. I don't have as much emotional investment, so I can kind of surpass nostalgia and be somewhat critical and know that they've done this episode better um, I think it, maybe it's time to go back to the drawing board and try to come up with new themes and new stories, not just try to, you know, slap a coat of paint on the same system. I am in total agreement about this segment. I won't call it a bad segment because I did laugh quite a bit, and there were also some eye-rolling moments like Professor Frink's death. The hell, that's the last. Is there a dendrologist in the house? And this is the Doppler effect. Teaching science. Oh, the fuck? But yeah, at least I did laugh. I agree. I do wish they went with something a bit more original because this is of the three big segments in this episode. This is the only one that's not a parody of a movie directly. And with that, it was still 
basically two previous segments combined with like you said a new coat of paint on it so that's kind of disappointing it's not terrible but it's just kind of it was okay yeah i agree um with you brandon it was an okay segment um i've seen it before you know it had similar elements to previous segments um i guess my favorite part of this segment is the fact that they're taking the time to actually make fun of themselves um, with that comment of, oh, every year with these three, you know, treehouse stories. This is one of those times that, like, I even go back to previous things. Like, I've also heard that joke, and I've heard it done better. It was done better when they did the Halloween episode of Simpsons. Yeah. Yep. The, um, there was a better version of that joke. Even, like, you know, when Ned came over and, like, oh, you're going to tell spooky stories? And then I was like, oh, no, no, that's next week. Like, that, that was a funnier version. So... It, it seems like, and the more I think about it, it seems like that this was a, you know, a lesser version of things that have been done in the past. Mm. I probably won't forget it. I remember this episode next year. Like, I could see where your guys' comments come into play. Like, it's definitely kind of trying to bring back, especially to the dolphin one more than the pumpkin one. Pumpkin yeah. one was more of a solo job, whereas this one, it's a grand army of trees. Yeah, it kind of but, became, it kind of started as one and became the other. Yeah, but for the most part, it's like, yeah. Nothing memorable here. I can agree with that. Damn. And then and then I guess we got some weird in-between shit. Right, so we got what is called online a poetic interlude. In January, art was awful. Put earthworms in his father's waffle. We get an animated Vincent Price telling Maggie a bedtime poem about all these bad things Bart is doing throughout the year. We get something for January, February, so on and so forth. Actually, the February one, where he catfished his teacher, is a direct reference to a season three episode. And it was probably the only funny thing in that entire thing. In February, the dead of winter, Bart catfished teacher right on Tinder. <laughs> in March, we saw... I actually liked this. Um, it's a weird, like, I liked this. It's just weird where it took place in the episode. And as much as I did enjoy the intro we got, I feel like this would have made a better intro to the episode. Mm. What do you think the chances are that this was the intro, but some producer somewhere just like... Nobody's gonna know who Vincent Price is. Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, fair enough. The, um, uh, yeah, I guess the, the, you know, it is a decent interlude. Yeah, because I did like the animation style of Bart in the poem. I did like the Vincent Price reference. And, of course, Maggie strangling Vincent Price to death at the very end. Yep. Um, yeah, this was really good. I really liked it. I liked the tone of it. I liked the animation, the blend of styles. Really, the only criticism I have is just where it was in the episode. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if they were trying to get experimental or if, like, Zach theorizes it used to be the intro but got moved for whatever reason but i i did enjoy it or maybe this is somebody this is something somebody wanted to do for one of the segments but like a budget maybe or just something happened and it just ended it up being it. a little pro or not a prologue but a little mm -hmm. poetic interlude you yes. said yeah so that i can definitely see that i can definitely see it, it might might have been the backbone of of a segment and it just wasn't quite fleshed out so they just did it as a little Thing. And it, or maybe the episode ran short and they needed an extra couple minutes. I don't know what its origin is, but I did enjoy it. Agreed. I think I it, enjoyed it. It was it was entertaining for sure. Yeah. Um, kind of with Brandon with the fact that um, placement was just so random. This is just how the episode played. It's just random. Okay, we're gonna sprinkle this up over here, and then we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of this here. It's a it's very a random little, episode. It's extremely random. It's like the old YouTube joke, like you know, like old YouTube videos, mm -hmm. like you know, like random is funny, random is funny, <laughs> random is funny. But that being said, I did actually did I did like this. I thought the animation was great. I thought it was fun, and it was it was whimsical, um, to say the least. Um, the the catfish one actually did make me laugh, and I think I think overall it was. It's pretty good. It's probably better than most of what was going on in the rest of these segments. In November, Bart can carve the turkey. You'll be serving human jerky. <laughs> then worst of all, in cold December. <laughs> so 
this brings us to our final story of the evening, Dead Ringer. The fuck? Is it random? Ah! David, tell us about All Dead right. Ringer. Well, this one in particular is definitely the most simplest one out of the, th the three. At least when it comes to like story and animation. And I enjoyed this one um, the most. We start with uh, Lisa eating lunch at school um, in the playground um, when the twins, Sherry and Terry. Terry. Okay, cool. Then I got it right. <laughs> Casual Simpsons fan. Uh, so Sherry and Terry come and they essentially are pretty much letting Lisa know about a party that they through that she wasn't invited up. Lisa, we have something to tell you. We had a party and didn't invite you. It was a week ago. We watched a cool TikTok. Wow, what a, yeah. what a bunch of bitches. Yep. But I mean, like, it's kind of accurate. The kids are cruel, and I'm pretty sure that's happened in the past where people are like, you know what, let's create this party and not invite this particular person because we just want to make them feel that way. Anyway, they talk to Lisa about the party, and then they talk about them watching a TikTok. <laughs> Which <we're laughs> they, gonna, gotta, they gotta fuck it up, dude. But anyone who watches the TikTok dies after seven days. Oh, I boy. watched it first. <laughs> I will say this, because this is basically a spoof of The Ring. Yep. And so updating The Ring for TikTok, well, want to make a good movie, I really liked as a setup as an updated version for the Simpsons Halloween special. And I will say that was a much better job at bringing the mythos of the ring into today than the actual third movie in the series rings. Well, I will, I will not watch it. We, we talked about this in a podcast where, you know, the, the, the movie works because it's self-contained in a VHS. Yes. And, like, there was a legend and mythos about secret VHSs, and, like, it just doesn't work in the internet age, you know, and everything else. I think, what did I say? It, it's like having the fucking Necronomicon on a Kindle. Like, it just, it's, <laughs> it just, it just doesn't work. Like, it just doesn't happen. I 100% agree, but for a Simpsons spoof taking place in 2021... You could do a lot worse. For just the current time, there's no other platform that you could do it on. Yeah. Like I just like it's it's so funny. Like YouTube at this point, it, like for those type of things, is just a thing of the past now. Like it's that it would for those kids, it would be TikTok until they're some other fucking random shit that they come up with. So yeah, apparently the TikTok that they watched, um, apparently if you watch it, you die in seven days. Obviously with the ring, um, and as they're, you know. Discussing the TikTok that they've watched, um, Ralph is swinging on a swing and kicks um, one of the twins' heads off. And so, yeah, and then one of the twins is like, all right, cool, she's dead. Now I get to be a lonely child and be the only twin. And then Ralph kicks her head off. Um, so Lisa, being curious, um, essentially goes and finds Bart. Um, and kind of wants to find out what the hell this video is all about. Um, and then Milhouse, I think, shows up um, out of nowhere and literally is like, yeah, I've watched it how many times? Eight, eight, times. eight times. And then kills over and dies and has like eight, eight or nine nice fucking back. knives on his, in his back. So, and then Lisa's like, oh, well, that's, you know, unusual. Yeah, that's about right. TikTok eight times. Oh. I didn't watch it. But you can if you want. Um, I kind of want to explore this further. Um, so we need to figure out what this TikTok is all about. Um, and, but they need to find somebody who's not afraid of death. We just have to find someone who isn't afraid of death and likes to watch TV. I'm your man! Uh, your grandpa, <laughs> if you do watch, you die in seven days. That's be more than the doctor gave me. <laughs> they find Grandpa Simpson. Who is not afraid. They're yeah. off of the win, as usual, in these Halloween episodes. Oh, yeah. This uh, was a great um, scene. They explained to Grandpa Simpson that, you know, when they when he does watch it, um, I guess the minor disclosure, that he will die in seven days, and apparently that's, um, you know, more, more than, than the doctor, doctor gave him. 
So yeah, he begins to watch the uh, the video, and it's a bunch of randomness. And he's essentially um, narrating what he's seeing to the kids. It's like, uh, it's a bunch of Wells uh, maggots. Um, oh no, it's an ad for Chipotle. Which <laughs> I guess I mean Zach would enjoy that because he doesn't like Chipotle. No, I fucking hate Chipotle. And he hates ads. Okay, first there's an evil-looking ring, and an empty chair, and a lady combing her hair. I like the old movies where the combing was implied. Now there's a bunch of maggots. <laughs> Satan head. More maggots. More maggots. No, wait, that's an ad for Chipotle. Now a woman's <laughs> jumping off a cliff, and we end up with an abandoned well. This is the kind of movie you watch in a museum when your feet hurt. And after watching the video, he gets a phone call. Um, <laughs> and the guy's like, seven days. And then Grandpa Sips is like, what? What was that? Seven days. I can't hear you. What was that again? Seven days. I don't know what you're talking about. And then you see, you hear the guy rambling. <laughs> like they, some demonic shit. What's your name? I'll write it down. Yeah, your... <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like, a, I don't know you, but here's my credit card information. <laughs> kind of accurate. Fucking ridiculous, man. Sad but true. Seven days. Maybe I better jot this down. What was your name again? <laughs> I don't know who you are or what you want, but let me give you my credit card number. <laughs> Bart and Lisa um, go to Principal Skinner to essentially talk or let them know what the hell the video is going on around. Um, essentially, he doesn't fucking give a shit. Because he's too busy with, um, I guess, sports teams and something else. Um, and then after that, Willie, because we always have to have groundskeeper Willie to um, explain what the hell is going on with the supernatural um, aspect of the show that they're fighting. Yeah. Groundskeeper exposition. He brings them back to the shed. He's explaining um, to them that about a girl called Mopey Mary. Was that what her name? Mopey sure. Mary. Sounds about right. Um, and apparently she was, um, in class or sad or whatever and fell down a well. No. She jumped down the well after a Valentine's Day prank. One cold February, after receiving note in a Valentine's box but a poop from the class rabbit, poor Mary ran to the old school well and threw herself in. She was down there for seven days before anyone bothered to look. Fortunately, it was the end of my shift. <laughs> Wait a minute. We don't have a school well. I covered it, so no one would ever go near it again. She just head first dived right into She just went like, nah, fuck life, I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> and she died seven days later, and the groundskeeper didn't check until then. And <laughs> Even then... He, he was off the clock, so I'm just going to cover it up. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> Close till <laughs> Monday. Yeah. Um, after all that, then Lisa decides, you know, she wants to fight the, the super bean or supernatural um, spirit. So decides to watch the video um, on her own. And then she gets the phone call. Um, and he, he goes seven days and she's like, no, I don't want to wait seven days. Kill me now. And he's like, uh, all right, hold on. And he puts her on hold. <laughs> Seven days. Coward! Say what? I don't want to wait seven days. So, come and get me now. Uh, I have to move some stuff around. Just a sec. <laughs> Killing you is very important to us. Oh, Please hold on. Your curse will be answered in the order it was received. Okay, um, how's Wednesday? I've got a guy coming to look at the air conditioner in the morning. The AC repair. guy was coming. Oh, yeah. AC Wednesday. guy. <laughs> yeah. So he essentially call, you know, answers the you know phone again. And he's like, uh, "How's Wednesday sound? You know, I got uh, the guy to come fix uh, my air conditioner in the morning." She's like, "No, that's not gonna do. You need to kill me now." And he's like, "Uh, very well." And then obviously you get the um, TV popping up, and then you got the girl coming out of the fucking well through the freaking TV. Kill me now. Or kill me never. Fine! Lisa 
Lisa, being Lisa, wants to befriend the spirit and tries to um, essentially calm it down. Um, I wanted to give you something. <laughs> something that will change the way you look at the world. <laughs> yeah, da, ah, here it is. Ah, ah. A valentine? For me? <clears throat> I want to be your friend. I want to braid your hair and see your beautiful face. <laughs> ah. Alright, alright. We'll work with that. She hands the girl uh, Valentine trying to show her that there is your <laughs> love or friendship out there and of course in Lisa fashion it says you're beautiful be beautiful <laughs> and then and then like um, after that she spins her fucking head around then shows her face and it's yeah we can do something th about that we can work on that and puts makeup on um, the actual like decomposing um, corpse essentially and so they're sitting outside um lisa grabs her saxophones like let me play you a song that i wrote about our that friendship I wrote about our friendship it's the blues well or well blues um as soon as she starts playing um girl's like uh, you know what fuck this and, <laughs> and runs out and jumps back in the fucking well hey i wrote you a song on the saxophone it's called well bottom blues <laughs> Tell you what, I'm just gonna walk right over here, okay? You sound great. I bet it sounds even better from the bottom of the well. Yeah, she was being rejected yeah, by essentially a, a corpse. <laughs> that was like <laughs> fucked up. Nobody likes Lisa. Yeah. But was but was great. The um and I actually had a hand to it. Lisa got kind of ballsy, man, like towards the end. I'm like, oh, well, 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 la -dee -da, Lisa. Hmm. This episode was actually a lot funnier. Um, and I think I enjoyed it more. I loved the setup for this one, but as much as I loved Lisa saying either kill me now or don't kill me at all, coward, everything after that, like the, the ending just didn't work for me. I liked the idea of Lisa being rejected by a corpse, but for how much I loved the setup, it just didn't come together for me in the end. Actually, that wasn't necessarily the end. The, the end was when um, Kane Kodos came in through... Um, it was the end. That was pretty much the end. Where were King and Kodos this time? Cramping to the final frame. Yep. They even admit that they got shoehorned yeah. in this time. At least they're finally admitting it. I've been saying this for years now. I can see where Brandon's coming from, though. Like, it did feel that it kind of got deflated. Like, it, it felt like that there wasn't really... Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't really a climax to anything. It just kind of, like, you know, just switched. And then, like... It, and it just... It just felt like a normal situation for Lisa. But it felt like a normal situation for Lisa that you would see in an episode in the middle of an episode so it's like the ending you know they cut out a piece of the middle and put it intact on the end meh meh yeah the whole segment in general or yeah just like i the mean it, like there wasn't anything like too funny for me for the most part i mean the child diving in head first into the wall to kill herself <laughs> that's kind of funny but that's besides <laughs> the point. this is the funniest uh, this is the funniest of uh, of, uh, of the other two like i think i think it's definitely the funnier episode i think there were I laughed more in this than I did the other ones. I think I found more enjoyment in it, and that I and I always dig when Grandpa Simpson comes around. The um, I don't know. I just I just enjoy him. They. Um, I think you have an unhealthy I, obsession, Mark. Yeah, I agree, man. Like I, I feel I'm agree with Brandon too, where the segment conclusion wasn't satisfying, but I feel that all three segments were like that. All three of their conclusions, to me at least, just weren't satisfied enough. It was mm. just like, all right, we got to end it. I enjoyed the first segment's conclusion because it did have that tie-in back to Homer being a good provider or a bad provider. So I at least had that thing to circle back to. Mm. Whereas the endings of segments two and three were just kind of mm. random without any real anchor from the story. Yeah. We'll see you next Halloween. That sucks. With tales of horror and pain. What horror! And so those are our three segments. Now, last year at the end of our Treehouse of Horror podcast, we did this thing where we listed our favorite segment, least favorite segment, funniest moment, and creepiest, scariest, goriest, grossest, 
whatever. We added a lot of adjectives to this final category, yes, but let's just call it the moment that best embodies Halloween for this year. How's that sound? That sounds great. So let's start with funniest moment. Funniest moment for me has to be the third segment where Grandpa Simpson's pretty much um, talking to the uh, guy coming in, you know, in seven days and is kind of confused of what he's listening to and then ends up giving his credit card number in the end. Seven days. What? Seven days. I can't hear you. I think it's a tie between Homer being, um, doing the self uh, referencing about Treehouse of Horror and then also the um the, the literally the seven day guy waiting on hold keeping lisa on hold in the whole way that all that that actually made me laugh that whole segment actually made me laugh i think when everybody murders lisa when she tried to start socialism in the town not quite socialism <laughs> not quite <laughs> but close enough close enough to the point where everybody's like nope <laughs> and i actually agree yeah. um i thought that was a really funny moment it feels organic to a parasite parody and it also feels organic to lisa character and it just works as a funny moment for both her and Mo and the entire town of Springfield, basically. I think that's the hardest I laughed throughout the episode. Probably. Yeah. Same. Nice. Uh, what moment best embodied Halloween to us? I know mine, and that was the poetic interlude. Early Christmas. Because every fucking Ooh, year, yeah, as soon as I pull the first hits, it's just like, all right, everybody throw the Christmas shit out. Let's get all... No, everybody throw the Halloween shit out. Let's get all the Christmas shit in here. Why? What are you... Why? You're talking about October, dude. People yeah. are doing that in fucking August. Either way, like, yeah, it's I, a that problem. Is, I, that is a I, Halloween's not even over and you're throwing Christmas shit in there. Dude, I, I, I've i seen that at Menards, man. It was like the like yeah. August 5th. And I walked back into a section, and there was like, I was like, I am wearing shorts, sir. It is 90 <laughs> degrees outside. There was no reason for this bullshit. Dude, I, I gotta say, man, like, I, I, I'm i kind of in agreement with both um, you and Zach on that one. Like, Draw the line somewhere, Mark. Um, I, You know what? I'm gonna go with the interlude just because I enjoy the interlude more, and it doesn't, you know... It doesn't fill me with a fiery rage. Now I'm gonna have to go with, with Zach's. Um, that's pretty much the moment for me because i feel that same rage because you know three or four years ago when i did walk into home depot when they first started doing this shit and i looked at my wife's like the fuck is going on here it's the least favorite segment i'm gonna go with two i agree i was kind of going in between that and another one um but what puts two over the edge for me is it really does just feel like two previous segments mashed together and while still funny at times just doesn't live up i'm gonna pick two though with a small caveat if i could pick the intro i would but if i'm gonna pick ace true segment it would be number two so for me simpsons definitely predicted the future again because the middle segment of this episode is <laughs> terrible <laughs> definitely a missed opportunity here to create something, um, I guess, unique, um, original, like Brandon said. I was expecting something different when we started the scene and, you know, the treehouse, but, and with the title, but I was like, oh, all right, this is what we're going to get. Okay. Zach, your least favorite segment. Three. I'm definitely not going to remember that one next year. So close to being unanimous. So close. And finally, everybody's favorite segment. Zach. How about you start us off on this one? Vincent Price. Do we want to count that as a full segment, though? I want to, and I was going to say the interlude. Because it's an interlude. I would choose that, too. But I don't know, because we've never had a situation like this before. That's the reason why, because it was so much better than all the other episodes. It was uniquely drawn. It actually had an interesting moment, and it was just, you know, cool. Which... It felt like it was creative and unique. The rest of the episodes, I could kind of give a thousand hells less about let me ask you guys this. Is there anybody that would not choose the interlude? No. No. I think everybody's... On, I <laughs> think everybody's pretty fucking unanimous on this um, one. Then for the sake of interesting conversation, favorite full segment then. That wasn't the interlude, I guess. I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go with three just because it made me laugh more than the other segments. Um, and it probably was more gory than the other uh, other segments by default 
The um, uh, but I think it was it made me laugh the most, and I think it had two of the funniest portions in, in the whole episode. So I'm gonna have to pick three. For me, it's gonna be the third one. Um, like I said, it, out of the three, this is definitely the the more simplest one. Um, unfortunately, I didn't watch Parasite, or I probably would have picked the first segment. Um, on basis because the third segment's conclusion uh, was just very meh. Um, especially when they're throwing, you know, cannon kodos, which it was sort of funny. Um, I didn't laugh too hard at it, um, but I did appreciate them just actually recognizing that they're being forced um, as a last minute thing. <laughs> so, well, yeah, third one for me. For me, it's the first segment. It was a really good parasite spoof. They used their time well, it was a very well paced segment. Um, I can't think of anything that I would cut from it. And if anything, I wanted more from it in a good way. And I thought it was just a really good segment. I was highly entertained and I thought it ended on a good note. Probably the middle segment. <laughs> you freaking rebel. <laughs> I'm not gonna conform with the U.S. I'm not gonna conform. Fight the power! <laughs> I never cared for the There's... parasite, so I'm like, meh. At least this one had walking evil trees. That's somewhat interesting. The uh... there, which I would not call any of these segments terrible. No. Everything, intro included, I did laugh at least once during everything, and the interlude was just outright intriguing and awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, overall, I had a fun time with this one. It is far from the best of Treehouse of Horrors. Okay. And in all honesty, if I were to rank all the episodes as a whole, this one would probably fall in the middle, maybe a little below. But unlike last year's, which was a slog, which both last year and this year, 22 minutes... Last year felt like three hours, whereas I thought the time just flew by overall for this year's. Um, I had a good time watching it with you guys, unlike last year, where I don't think any of us had a good time. It wasn't the quality that I want from A Treehouse of Horror, but I can't say I had a bad time either. It was overall just in the middle, but it had just enough good in it that every year when I do my Treehouse of Horror marathons, I won't dread coming up on this one. It was enjoyable. I was entertained. Um, so if you entertain me, all right, it's a good episode. Um, I did enjoy the interlude a lot more than the three segments. Um, it reminded me of the one segment they did a few years back of um, Coraline. So I'm a fan of this type of experiment animation. They do that very well. I think... I think besides the intro, I pretty much enjoyed everything. I think it's it, um I think if I had to rank a top half and a bottom half for all Treehouse of Horrors, this would definitely be in the bottom half. However, it would be higher up in that list. The um I, I didn't dislike it, um, although I cannot ignore the eye rolling moments that I had. Um, but it but it did have that fantastic interlude that I thought was really, really inventive, and I think that that's a glimmer of what may be possible in the future. Hopefully. Hopefully. Thank you for watching this year's Simpsons Treehouse of Horror edition of The Screaming Room. You can check out all of our previous episodes of The Screaming Room right here on YouTube. And of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, if you could be so awesome to stab that like button, smash that subscribe, and click that little dingy bell to be notified every time we drop amazing content right here at MHN. We're doing a lot of amazing content this month for October. A lot of great stuff. Uh, in addition, you can also check out our TikTok and Instagram where we're doing even more content exclusively for those channels. And also, you can check us out on social media. Brandon, where can they find us on social media? You can find us on social media at Midwest Horror Network on Facebook, Instagram, and Slasher. Later, guys. Seven days. I can't hear you. Seven days. Maybe I better jot this down. What was your name again?